we have um, Miss Karen Nunez to share. Ms. Karen Nunez to share, um, who has offered herself as candidate for be to be the political leader of the People's National Movement when the internal elections is held. Good afternoon to you, ma'am. Well, good afternoon, Larry, and to your listeners. Happy to be here at the home of 95.5. I, first time I'm here, but um, it wasn't hard to find. It's the biggest building <laughs> on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to, thanks, nice to have you, and thanks for taking the time to come and speak with us. Our listeners are listening to you. Why should they, the PNM people who have to vote, who qualify to vote at the internal elections next week, why should they vote for Karen Nunes to share her as the next PNM leader? Well, first of all, um, I want people to understand that um, I threw my hat in the ring, um, but I hope people are not going to look at it in as if it's a, a, some sort of um, challenge, so to speak, because we do have a prime minister, and we recognize that. But the question is an uh, issue of leadership, and I think that um, the country, and you just have to read what the media says, what people are saying, and um, the cr cry of a lot of people that they are looking not the party. Not the party is the um, issue for many people, but it's the leadership. And um, I believe that I have had the experience of being Minister of Finance in uh, government, a PNM government, and having the experience of being a member of parliament and being um, all the things that I hope show that um, uh, ability for leadership. I, people may not know, but I also founded a foundation called Leave, a Reach for the Stars. And very quietly over the years, we've done a lot of work with young people and other people. So. I guess this is just another stage in my um, in my life, M making an, and of course written three textbooks, all for the Caribbean, for the Caribbean lect um, student, and for the Caribbean um, um, practitioner. So I guess I am a Caribbean person and make my contribution in the best way I can. But how is this going to work if? How is this going to work? Um, the party is being asked, membership is going to be asked to elect a new leader mm -hmm. of the party. Mm -hmm. But you are, you are in government, so you have a prime minister and you have a cabinet. Mm -hmm. And you have a members of parliament who were elected by this leader and his executive team. Mm -hmm. How that seems to be, that will seems to be going to be a difficult um, relationship, tenuous actually, how... Con clear conflict, I could see um, a new leader and a new executive calling the existing prime minister and his cabinet and his members of parliament to count, especially since your argument, your positioning is that you have a different, that, that, that you're picking up that, and clearly you would have, you agree that there's an the issue is the leadership. How is that going to gel? But that's what I hope to do. I mean, I don't see that. You know, sometimes one needs an independent voice, um, someone who perhaps can um, give a point of view that perhaps people may feel constrained not to do that for a number of reasons. Um, certainly, I'm not coming. Um, I'm coming as part of the People's National Movement, and I have always been um, loyal to the People's National Movement. And in fact, I think having uh, another voice, uh, hopefully a voice that is one of constructive criticism that will allow persons to be willing to to listen, willing to participate, because I'm certainly not coming there to create um, any sort of um, friction. I, I think it's a, it's a positive thing. Um, I don't know if information I got was correct. I, I stand to be corrected, <laughs> but I was told that when we were in opposition, um, for 48 months, there were only four meetings of the party. Now, if the party had difficulty during a period of opposition when you were not running the country, when you were not the cabinet, and you had difficulty in having meetings... What meet kind of meetings are you talking about? Um, I think of the central executive. You think? Uh, yeah, yes, I believe so. That's why I started by saying... I, um, the person was absolutely sure about what they're saying. I said, you know, you're saying it, you're absolutely sure. I... I'm going to rely on your absolute sureness because I, the source was so um, 
you know, the, when you talk about, you know, different sources, I think his source was an impeccable source, but I still really? want to be on the, care, uh, okay. be on, you know, careful side of it. But the well, point about it is well, that... Let me, when, just, let me just say, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and in terms of the structure of the party, yes. you have legislative, yeah. where the elected members meet. Mm -hmm. You have general council, where the representatives mm -hmm. of the party in the constituencies meet. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have central X mm -hmm. and so on. So, which group are they talking about? I do believe that they would have been speaking about the central executive, um, certainly at the leadership. They, they were speaking, um, and I didn't go into detail on it, but I don't want to get, you know, the limited time I have with you to get, um, you know, get down into what I would, excuse my language, but what I say is minutia. You asked me really what would be the benefit. I think there's a lot of benefit because we're not enemies, and in fact, we're working together. And I think that it allows, especially now, um, uh, in the leadership within the party, you're talking about the central executive, you're talking about general counsel, people will be able perhaps um, um, bring their concerns. And you see what, as I always say, a political party is not a football club. Yes, football is on, I know that. <laughs> but it's not a football club, it's not a cricket club. In other words, its, it's reason for being is does not end and begin with being the best football club and going to the World Cup. Yes, that's the ultimate. Um, but your political party, your, your intention is to form the governance. So if you are seeing issues as we have seen, because it's being played out um, within the, from the party leadership to the governance of the country being played out before our eyes, then you see that there's some where um, issues there, and we want to ensure that that disconnect, what we consider to be things that are not positive for the party, are addressed. Because clearly, the leader, um, whether it is of the party, clearly of the country, has a lot of um, power. And what we're seeing is too much of um, discontent, too much the crime. Look at the crime rate. I think we've reached about 400 and. I think we're nearly going to surpass um, the 2008 number, and the responses that we have gotten um, have not been very, um, can I say, um, responses that show a sense of um, cons the kind of concern that people would want to see. And it seems that um, your parents are to blame, what you're doing out on the road at that, um, at that hour. And then when people complain about the cost of food, which all over the world is a problem, we understand that. But I want to ask you a question. Mm. If you if your source of information that you say to be reliable you, says you, you come back to the forty eight. I months? must for a reason. Uh, why do you want why do you need to come I'll back tell you there? why, I'll tell uh -huh. you why. Mm -hmm. If the person said that we only had four yeah. executive meetings. Yeah. And that was a problem. Yeah. In your opinion. If it was true, it's a problem. If it's true. Then yeah. then how come the PNM won the election? You see, so, so it means that it, it, so then how if they if you're asking the me to answer you or you want to answer? No, but question? I want to clarify. Well, I can answer you without you clarifying. Sure, I think Go ahead. Um, one of the things that we found in Trinidad, especially in the last few elections, that people vote parties out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not voting a party in as much as voting a party out. And I think that um, the party of the People's Partnership. I mean, there was not a weekend I could say that I did not read in the paper some new scandal with that yeah, party. Yeah. So, so a lot of people had gotten absolutely bone tired. I myself, among others, that every week there was some scandal. So it seemed like there was no peace yeah. in the country. And then you have to know that, um, and I would not, I would have done the same thing as the prime minister did do. Um, I think everyone congratulated him and I among them for how he handled COVID-19. The WHO congratulated him. And he was to be congratulated because you needed a strong leader. You needed a leader that people took seriously and he didn't go in the river and he didn't go in the sea. And, of course, he called the election soon after that, at the height of that. And as soon as things settled down and we passed the post-COVID period, then people started looking at the issues of unemployment, issues of crime, the issues that we have in this country. But are they unique to Trinidad and Tobago? Well, you know, the level, of, well, the level of crime, definitely, we are in the top ten. We're in the top 10, by only do it per 100,000, we're definitely there. And then if you ask him, are you need to trend that? I, um, yes, because I was Minister of Finance, I tend to look at data. So one of the things I do look at, for instance, when you look at um, Jamaica, Barbados, um, the ECCU countries, you look at what their growth position was in 2021. It was a negative. And the IMF predicted, for example, for Barbados, 11 point something 
a growth, but we won't even use Guyana because that's a complete outlier. But the easy use, so you're seeing countries a great growth. And what is the issue with Trinidad is that any growth, or we haven't had growth really. What we've seen is the GDP, our gross domestic product, has increased. And why has it increased? is because of the increase of oil and gas, which has nothing to do with us, but has a lot to do with Ukraine and let Russia. Let me ask you another so, brief so question. So just let me just say this. So if you really want to know if we have um, really um, improved, what you want to look at is the real GDP, because the real GDP will tell you then if the great increase in our GDP from 114 um, billion to 180 billion, whatever it was, was as a result of increase in production and growth. And when you, if you use that as your factor, then you will see has the economy grown, has the economy produced, and what you're seeing, that's the answer is no. All right, so let me ask you quickly mm. before you know, yes, I don't want to. Yes, out of um, time. Yes. You were a member of Parliament and a minister. Yes. And you were part of the team that lost the elections in 2010. Yes. Yes. Why did we lose the elections in 2010? Well, I would say... A, a part, as you yeah, being part so, of that team. Yes, and I would say that you know that NACTA did a poll, and on the NACTA poll, I was the number one member of parliament in Trinidad and Tobago. They said I even beat ja um, Jack Warner. So why did we lose? Under um, People undermining. I was told by my own constituency that they were not support. They were supporting um, Rowley. I was told by my own... You're asking me the answer. I'm giving you the answer. And the people within my own... Um, in a circle were undermining me. So, in fact, when I was having uh, uh, meetings with them, they had their phone on and they were allowing the other side to listen to what we were saying. So there was a lot of undermining that was going on and um, obviously um, losing the elections meant that Patrick Manning um, clearly would have to step down and the next obvious person to lead us in opposition would be um, Keith Rowley and I think um, Kamala got a good enough try and she made a good enough mess of it. <laughs> and um, so that's how it is. But why we lost? Um, hmm. Calling a little election was not a good thing. Yeah. Um, I had no control of that. I was not the prime minister. Um, but I can say as a member of parliament, I was number one as a member of parliament. And with the CL financial crisis, global financial crisis, people talk about one thing, but they forget to say that uh, they, the Trinidad and Tobago was one of the one of the countries that was able to maintain the confidence of both the financial and the economic the economy of the Trinidad and Tobago. And that's the way we handled the. And by the way, at that time, oil had dropped from $100 to $23. We had to go twice back to the parliament to get to revise the budget. And we are one of the few countries that were able to maintain the confidence of the people. I wish you could talk question. about that sure. more. My final question, though. <laughs> I love them to talk time. about that more, My though. final question, because of time, somebody <laughs> makes, asks me to yes. make sure I ask you that question. Yes, yes. So you are a member of parliament in 2010. Yes. So, this was 2007 to 2010? Yes, that's correct. Um, the PNM lost the elections, yes. a difficult time in the life of the party. Very much. Where were you? Where was I? Between looking? 2010 okay. and, tw and, and 2015. Yeah, so that's a question I've been asked. One, I was looking at, for a job like many people, and I had to leave the country. For four years, you're asking me, yeah. for four years I was in Barbados because I might have assets, but I didn't have income. And I had a daughter in medical school. And I can assure you, I didn't even have a car living in Barbados. And even my circumstances were not the best. So I also felt that I was not a good fit. I don't like to go into the good fit part because I don't like to say that I'm going to, you know, be, you know, I don't like, you know, I just like to say I was not a good fit. And I really was not a good fit. Um, I wouldn't know the people who were going in. I had a good idea. As you said, I was the Minister of Finance. So I think having gone through CL Financial and Kiko, I had a good idea of what was going on and had a good idea of what was going on within the party and I wanted no part of it. I was approached. I've said that many times and no one has ever um, denied that I'm speaking the truth. I was approached to be a senator and I said no because I didn't think, I didn't like where the, I also did not like where the support was coming from, was the financial it, was support. Was it that or your commitment to get income in Barbados as an actor? It was a combination. Things are never one di dimensional but I definitely knew that I was not, you mean, if I'm being very honest, I believe that the party was getting its financial support, which is why if I get in, I would absolutely pass the legislation dealing with campaign um, financing. And I was absolutely sure 
that the source of campaign financing was one that did made me very uncomfortable because they would want return on investment and the return they wanted would not be the interest of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. I want to thank you for it. your time. It was thank a pleasure. Thank you very much. You. Gave me a lot of pressure and rush to do that, but yeah. good. But, you know, we just want to give everybody yeah. a chance and the other can another Absolutely. candidate is right Thanks on for having me and I pleasure. hope I can be here more often. This is the first time I've seen the building ever since you've been here. Ma'am, but it, you know, I, I'm maybe, sure, the, I'm sure maybe, maybe, maybe a landslide in Kwaito. Kwaito is more important than having Karen to share on a show. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank